Welcome to Pop Culture Legends, a mini series from Digital Dissection, a nerd podcast. Pop Culture Legends explores the spaces between the mainstream and esoteric across the world of media. There's a lot to unbox across video games, movies, TV, and comic books. We hope you enjoy the spaces between those spaces. Today, we look into the influences behind the hit single, The Way, by Fastball. During the 90s, Fastball rocketed up the music charts with the song, but many didn't know at that time that the lyrics behind the track were based on real people. We look into the real-life missing persons case that influenced the band, and the unfortunate circumstances of the events. Nineties music was just built different. The era featured plenty of blues inspirations, emerging punk rock, alternative, and grunge. Many successful bands emerged from this melting pot of new sounds, with one in particular being the Austin, Texas-based Fastball. The band itself is comprised of Tony Scalzo, Miles Zuniga, and Joey Shuffield. Initially, the band went by many names, Star 69, Magneto USA, and Starchy before eventually settling on the name Fastball. For a time, the band would focus their efforts on playing gigs within Austin, Texas specifically, earning a reputation there before being noticed by a journalist that recommended them to Hollywood Records. Like many bands, it took some time for them to gain widespread appeal, as their first album after being signed by Hollywood Records didn't fare well, and the future of the band was in a state of flux. During this tumultuous era for Fastball, its members would actually balance part-time jobs while trying to write music. By 1998, their second album titled All the Pain Money Can Buy went platinum within only six months of its release. This led to nominations for Grammys and Best Rock Performance by a duo or group, and Best Long Form Music Video, as well as appearances on late night talk shows and consistent radio play. If you turned into an easy listening radio station around the late 90s, you surely remember Fastball for several hit songs. Out of My Head, Fire Escape, and the one we're focusing on, The Way. The Way would go on to top Billboard's Modern Rock Tracks chart for seven consecutive weeks. And within the mainstream top 40, it was the top five hit. The Way told a story about an elderly married couple who leave their lives behind and seemingly disappear after their car breaks down. Its vibe and overall tone balances depression and equal parts happiness as the couple detaches themselves from the constraints of their daily lives and insinuates a level of freedom in doing so. By the end of the song, the elderly couple's family try and find them, but to no avail. The lyrics of the song can be relatable but in reality are inspired by two events that occurred in 1997. Many of us at the time may not have known the story, but the way is based on the disappearance of elderly couple Leela and Raymond Howard, who hailed from Salado, Texas. The Howards were in their 80s and set up to visit a music festival nearby their home, only about 15 miles away. The couple was known to visit this festival every year, but Leela had an evolving case of Alzheimer's and the idea of traveling on their own concerned her son, Hal Copeland. Despite many requests to forego the trip, Hal would eventually give in despite the fact that Raymond Howard himself had also been recovering from memory problems after a car accident shortly before these events took place. He experienced swelling in his skull from this accident and refused to take medication after doctor recommendations. Despite the concerns from family and the ailments that the Howards had, they set off on June 29, 1997, the last time they'd be seen by their family ever again. With the festival not being that far away, family members expected the couple back within a reasonable amount of time. Unfortunately, after hearing nothing for several days, the Howards' children began trying to figure out where they were. With initial concerns already fully expressed before the trip, an intensified search would begin 
as Leela and Raymond would officially be reported as missing persons within the week. The search would be massive, as volunteers, police from several communities, and family members would all be involved in tracking down the couple. Their efforts would involve checking businesses, locations, and side roads they thought made sense as a likely route from Texas to Arkansas. A Walmart employee confirmed having seen the Howards about five days after they had left, and leads were pouring in. It seemed that at least early on, there was plenty of information that would hopefully lead to a positive resolution. The Howards' home would be searched by investigators to see if there were any clues that could help in locating where they might be. What they found were signs that the couple's mental state was far worse than family members had initially feared. Despite going on a trip, the Howards had left behind folded clothes that they likely meant to take with them. Their cat was also left behind without any food or water. And the most concerning, they didn't take their hearing aids with them. For a couple on their way to a music festival, this was definitely one of the strangest findings. Shortly after these findings, Leela and Raymond would actually end up being pulled over by the police between July 2nd and 3rd for minor traffic infractions, both involving their headlights. The first time they were stopped was almost 500 miles away from where they initially started, nowhere near the vicinity of their home or the music festival they were supposed to be visiting. The couple was clearly confused by interacting with the authorities, and the place they were stopped by were unfortunately unaware of their status as missing persons. Despite everything involved in the search, and the recent interaction with law enforcement, the Howards would vanish even with everyone frantically trying to locate them. The Howards last known location was a farmer's market on July 3rd, and the focus of the search redirected there. As it was in Arkansas and Texas, authorities felt confident they'd eventually locate them if they were still traveling in their maroon Oldsmobile while they monitored Texas highways. Unfortunately, even with the information the search effort had available to them, the Howards were effectively missing without a trace. The last known information they had led to no new findings, and even with a seemingly good plan to locate the elderly couple, no developments would happen for two weeks after they initially left their home. On July 12, 1997, near Hot Springs, Arkansas, a pair of hikers discovered a maroon Oldsmobile covered in dense brush. The sight was concerning, as the car was found at the bottom of a 25-foot cliff. Raymond, unfortunately, would be found dead, still belted within the car, and Leila's body was found 20 feet away from the car itself. Authorities theorized that she likely crawled away from the car and succumbed to her injuries after going over the cliff. Her corpse was found still clutching her keys and purse. Unfortunately, despite these findings, it still gives us little to go off of as to why the Howards ended up where they did, and in particular, how they met their demise. According to investigators, the scene of the accident had no skid marks of any kind, meaning the vehicle went over the cliff with no effort to try to stop. Based on the impairments Raymond and Leela both had, it's possible that they were so out of sorts that they didn't even know they were about to leave the road. Additionally, the site itself was 350 miles from their home, and to this day, family members don't even know how they managed to get so far off of course when the musical festival they were attending was only a drive of, at best, 5 to 10 minutes away. Unfortunately, we'll likely never have the answers for why the events unfolded the way they did. At least in the eyes of the Howards family, in an article from Spokesman.com, many of the relatives found solace in knowing that Leela and Raymond had died together. The couple never strayed too far away from each other, and while tragic, at least there's closure in knowing that it was an unfortunate set of circumstances instead of foul play. No matter which way you view the events, Fastball's song and specifically the obsession of its lead singer, Tony Scalzo, 
led to it lives on as a memorial to the deceased couple. While the real world events that inspired the way are truly sad, the message of the hit song at least offers a different interpretation of how to process what unfolded. For many, the origin of the song was unknown at the time it was released, and its lyrics in many ways can offer comfort where its actual inspirations could not. If anything, we can at least look to the works of Fastball's lead singer and songwriter himself, as he explained his thought process in writing the song's lyrics. I looked in. Right away, this story sort of struck me. It was sort of an ongoing story, still no developments in the case of the missing couple. I just started getting these ideas. Well, maybe they don't want to be found. Maybe they're just like, they're sick of being responsible, and they just want to go out and have fun. At the same time, I think a lot of its power comes from the story behind it. I somehow put together this musical piece that was enhanced by the story. And I also believe the story, for the family and the people involved, was enhanced by the song. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Pop Culture Legends, a digital dissection miniseries. Be on the lookout for future episodes as we explore the relative unknown as some of pop culture's stories lie just outside mainstream periphery. If you like the story, why not like, subscribe, and comment as part of the Digital Dissection community. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as our dynamic content on YouTube. Tell us what you think. We'd love to hear from you at digitaldissectionpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, keep on dissecting. And to Leela and Raymond, rest in peace. <laughs>